Hello and welcome back to the County of Portsydale. My name is Badger the British and on this episode we are going to be taking a deep dive into our public transport that flows in and out because after that live stream and finding out the ridiculous amount of money we spend on buses alone, like 12,000 and was only getting 3,000 in return. That's not good economic policy, especially when you find out that some of your bus lanes had zero people, but about 20 buses made no sense. So we went through, got rid of the main offenders, but now comes the crunch. It is currently Saturday lunchtime, and I'm going to be spending probably the next couple of hours going through this to show you what I mean. Uh, let's have a look. We fixed it up. These ones that have been fixed. So we got our amount of passengers. So if it's got a low amount of passengers, it's got a small bus that can take like 20 people. Perfect. That cut a cost phenomenally. And that can like pick up quite a few people. Then when it got a bit busier, we kept the bigger buses in play. But we're still going to have a look and see if things can be improved. Now, we're going to go through each one of these. Well, I'm not going to do that because that will be a very, very boring, long video. But because there are 72 of them, but it is costing us quite a lot of money. I mean, look at that. That is still, we're around about, we're actually making more money now than I think we were. But we definitely got about 3,000 less, but we're still £4,000 in debt per week to these buses. So, you know, unfortunately, Unite the Union, we are going to have to cancel some more bus lines and driver jobs. I'm sorry. Sorry to brush your balls. I know that there would be a massive strike if this was actually in play, but, you know, we've got to think about stuff. So let's show you what the actual problem is. Let's go back to Portsdale 2. So here we are on Portsdale 2. As you can see, we are making a heavy loss, nearly 12,000 on buses. And if we go to our bus transport page and we click here and we go to passengers, you can see there was 15 buses carting around no people 10 buses carting around no people 9 buses carting around no people 18 vehicles carting around zero people and so forth so forth so you get the idea and these are big bendy buses like this oh, the bendy buses why what, okay now you can see why we had to act some of those services and get rid of them all so Without further ado, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our other save. So here we go. You can see we have jumped back to the future in Portsydale. And we're before and after the uh, the loss of so many <laughs> outrageous buses. Because we've got these nice little ones back in. And yeah, let's go over what we... Wait, if there's 21 people there, there does not need to be a bendy bus. That's going to cost us way more monies. All right, cut that down. Number one. So that's like a number, th like a th like if it hasn't got many people on it, then I think even we could, we can like change that to a minibus. If it's no more than twenty people, it could be a minibus. And let's have a look. How many vehicles? Two. Let's put a third one. Just the third one. So yep, yeah, three small vehicles. That's fine. We don't need two like however many buses. And that is literally what we're going to do. So we're going to go, find, let's find a line we haven't done. So this is what I'm basically going to be doing for the next four hours after I cut away, is to go through each individual line, give them a name, give them a different form of transport if needed, and definitely cut down on the amount of vehicles being used for that line, because it doesn't make that much sense. So let's have a look. 24 p passengers using this. Where is it? So here we go. After clicking on the line, we can see that this serves people to get back from the industrial industry down here by the airport all the way through this village and down into this zone here as well so hear that bum bum does it literally just go back oh it just goes back it's like a little one but who covers the buses up here no one so what we're going to do first off it's because obviously we want some bus coverage. So we are going to take that bus and we're going to expand the line out. So we're going to take this. Why is there not a stop in on the main shopping line? 
There should definitely be a, a stop on the main shopping line. Like 100. And then we're going to have it come down this cul-de-sac. Away from the main roundabout. And then we're going to have it come down the beachfront. And what we're trying to do is draw a U. Shape. Not a U, U but a U shape with it. So it comes down. It serves these people as well. So let's push it further down. Don't play games with me now. Come on. Play ball. Boom. Grab the other side. So those people can just walk down to the end of the street where these people will have to walk a longer way. So we're going to incorporate them. So they see we've now made a U. So that will serve these people as well. So that's much better. Boom. And boom. And stop there. Perfect. Do we want it to come up this road? Or oh, the other road? Uh, yeah, this road seems better. Don't know why, it just, it's got the vibe that seems better. So there we go, we're going to pop that there. Not just before that junction, pop that there. And yeah, just one line before it goes over, and one line just as it enters. Nah, because it enters there. Perfect. It's a bit mad, I know. But there we go, so that now covers that area and we'll pick up more people. And as you can see, these people are now upgrading as well, so they're going to be bringing in more tax after this. After all of this, and a little bit of rearrangement and investment, that these now are going to be higher like paying taxpayers. And that can only be a good thing. And it just seems mean that this does not connect up to that bus station here. So let's pop that in. Let's give it its own route so they can easily get to that train station. So there we go. These people can now easily get to this train station and they're off around the network and this area is now improved and we just can't actually do anything. We can't, well, I'm not going to mark that purple meaning done because it's not. Because we just because we've modified the line we don't know how many things, but we do know that 11 vehicles is a bit much. So let's, I think 11 is a bit steep. Maybe four. I mean, there's not many people waiting in each stop. You just, I mean, if you're going down the line, like, you think about this. The more buses you take off your streets, the less congestion there will be. So if there was tons and tons of buses, it would just clog up all the traffic. Where here, if they can actually move faster because there's less traffic. If that makes any sense. Not that I'm trying to dictate or like you know say that cu cutting public services is a good thing, but you know that's one thing. Uh, what are we going to call this? Local airport village to station. And there we go. And we're going to mark it in green for... Yeah, we're kind of okay with this. And that is basically, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the afternoon. And when I get back, we are going to fix this problem. So let's have a look what we're on now. So we want to get this to neutral or better, basically. So we need to get this down to about 3,000. Would be wonderful. Look, we're even underspending on buses. Underspending on all our public transport. Wow, okay, something's going wrong here. Right, here we go, let's have a look. I'll see you in a few, ladies and gents. Hello and welcome back from the cutaway where I went painstakingly through every single one of these bus lines. As you can see, given them a colour for modded it, might have to come back later. And, you know, or pink for pretty much good. Let's go cut down so many vehicles, slash the budget all the way down, gave them all a name so I know exactly where the bus goes, everything like that. And yeah, it has reflected in the budget. So if we have a look here, we got it down from nearly 50% of expenses are gone. 
So now we've got it down to about 6,000 uh, expense and income is only nearly 4,000, 4, which is not bad. But then, yeah, obviously the, the tram thing, that's an experiment. And that's, gonna, that's pretty pricey, actually, for what it is. That was for our Yellow Hammer University. And I haven't looked at these two yet, but the trains, I took an absolute look at to see if we could squeeze any money out anywhere. And it was so expensive. Very, I had to delete a line. I actually deleted, where is it? The line that goes into the basic university over here. The reason why is because there's like 16 people using it. You can just get a bus. It wasn't much use. So what we might have to do in the future, I mean, I look at that bill as well, like 50, 44,000. Oh my God, we're actually in profit. Public transport's actually in profit, all thanks to the airport, but still, this is not good. We need to get this under control. And we've jumped up 2 million during this time. So that's how, I'm not saying that this is the whole thing, but just by looking at these two alone and this one a little bit by increasing, uh, so main things we did for this was to make the buses bigger if needed and to have less buses. So there's nothing with like crazy amounts, nothing, I don't think there's any line with over 10 buses and those 10 buses are in city centres. Um, where there's an obvious need for them, like 200, you know, see, that's 27 passengers per bus, roughly, and, yeah, you know, 32 passengers per bus. So it's all, like, ratio-wise is working out, that might have to be looked at, but that would definitely need to be looked at. And, yeah, just gentle little tweaks like that, making uh, changes, so if you've got a small line that only has, like, 10 passengers, just like one or two of these little minivans jump jumping around the place will be absolutely fine. And yeah, there we go. We're going to have another, we're going to let it settle down and simmer because, you know, we did stuff with the trains as well. This is also another thing I wanted to look at today, which was, you know, to cut down. There's only like one or two trains now per line. And that's uh, only if it was necessary. And I also made sure the big lines have these big carriers that can carry up to 400 passengers per train and yeah so that's made it a bit more efficient so if i were to start this whole project again and i don't know let's say i've got an upcoming city to build what would i do i would definitely not be so reliant on trains I'm gonna shift over to metro systems because they are like half the price and half the running costs I don't know why they're so expensive but you know we are gonna have a train terminal in here uh, but we are gonna have a better metro system it's gonna rely much more on the on the old metro and then I would upgrade probably start from a metro system and then upgrade from there so just have one of these giant centers so we can move people around the place fairly easily but then everywhere else metro 100 just to keep it nice and simple what can i do now absolutely nothing because the city's already in it's already plumbed in i may be able to uh, oh dear central park is on fire uh, i may be able to you know take this out demolish it because it's actually doing nothing now but getting in the way so you know maybe redesign this push that over so it goes through to these ones but other than that nothing maybe flick it over to a metro when well yeah maybe disconnect this because there's, there's no point in having this metro even though it's cool for the airport one coming back and forth maybe disconnect that and have that fly over to the university ground so that the university students they arrive they get on the university thing and go off there because it's not worth having this train station at the moment maybe when it when the custom university is built 
then there might be an influx of students. But until then, it's not really worth it. There was another line that we had to, we were almost going to cancel. Yes, left lung line, this one. This one only has, if we can we have a look. This one has the lowest amount of passengers. Oh no, well, sorry, second lowest. The lowest line is um, Squirrel Woods. So I would actually think about removing Squirrel Woods and replacing that with a tram service because trams are a lot cheaper apparently to run and maintain even though they're basically the same. Not, not a tram, a uh, metro like, service. So that would be maybe a new project to link it into here somehow and have that going on because there's no point in having I, I like this idea it's, it's good to have people drive uh, have their train out here but at the same time 40 thousand pound I mean 44 thousand pound that's a lot of money when you could replace it hopefully for less and I think that is just because the maintenance of keeping these things running is a lot higher because the station is 480 to keep running if I'm correct no it's 900 okay it's 900 quid a week to run and then sales per week it's nearly a pound per cell compared to a metro which is 60 so that's a third off and a train station is half that so yeah, that's instant savings if you were to pull this out. Maybe join this these three up into that one, these three up into that one, have a metro line that swung over and a raised metro line that ran along beautifully, put these down and just have it as a raised metro line coming back and forth and see if it saves any money. That'd be a good cost experiment in the long run. So yeah, that's gonna be the next project and next video, but until then I think we've done a damn good job and we've actually I think we've actually got more tourists and more people using the buses now just but obviously we've got to let it settle down and see because now all these people with the new improved bus services can get to the trains much faster so will that put a bit more pressure on our train system and can they cope at the moment at the moment they seem to be doing see it's already gone up a hundred if we click on this it's a very popular line and you can see right here, because now we've got 600 people waiting here for a train to come out because our bus services and buses in this area are much bigger and can take more people quickly to the train station here. So just before I say goodbye, I would say it's a very, very key tool to manage your buses and things like that, because that is just ridiculous. Like that's now, that's now 6,000 I'm saving on buses alone while still moving and transporting the people around everywhere. And as I did it, we are now actually getting more tax in from people. I, I believe we'll have a double check, but we're actually gone up because of more people were upgrading. So there's no longer, not many ones and twos, but now everyone's much more higher up, which is brilliant. And that means it's much easier to run your transport. Also, we put all these down. Like, how? Oh, it's got a lot to learn, don't we? Right. Oh, we've got to pop that down. That will save some money. And yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Joy be with you all. And on the next one, we will have a look at replacing the Squirrel Woods line because it is the least profitable, slash, you could just replace that with a big old bus. Just slap down a road and then put a hundred people carry a bus and that would just make a difference. So we're going to see if we if it makes a difference just to stop the service, put in a new bus station and see, not a bus station, a, um, what do you want to call it, a tram station. But yes, until then, goodbye and joy be with you all. I hope you enjoyed that and remember to like, subscribe and maybe even hit that bell notification button so you don't miss out on the next episode.
Oh, we've still got some seconds. Why not give me some feedback in the comments below? It would be greatly appreciated. And bonus, you can find me on your favourite social media platform. Links are in the description below. Until next time, have a lovely day.